In this video, I'm going to be telling you all the things I like about the new Garmin 965 Forerunner and all the things I don't like. I'm also going to be telling you if it's worth £600. What is up everybody and welcome to 40 Runs. How are we all doing people? You know the drill, let me know. In the comments and while you're down there, tell me what is your go-to GPS running watch? What watch do you currently wear for running? Okay, now this is a bit of a minefield, this whole sector, because um, you've got top end stuff like, you know, the Apple Ultra watch, um, the Epix, Epix 2, Phoenix 7, solar and then you go all the way down to like the garmin 55 um it's oh, it's an absolute minefield and for me personally i think i've said it on on every video i've done i just want to watch it does the basics right that said as i've sort of i don't know got older <laughs> um i've kind of looked to a few things to be included on the watch that i do kind of uh, like and feel myself needing more and more now I had a Garmin Phoenix 6 Solar, 6 Pro Solar, um, and my biggest complaint about that was um, the screen, and the size of the screen, and the sort of coloration of it, and the fact of also the weight of the watch, was it was so heavy, it was like doing an extra workout when I was running along, and I was always looking, or, or tempted by, getting another watch um, that was lighter and, and did the similar sort of stuff, but was just basically lighter and easier to wear when running. Now, just as a heads up, uh, this watch, uh, the Garmin 965 Forerunner, which I have here, was not supplied by Garmin. They didn't send me the 965 uh, for review. Um, and just as a heads up, also how it tends to work with the Garmin stuff, and most of the watches actually, they tend to send the, well, to, to most of the people I know, they send the watches out to be reviewed, but you, you basically, you're borrowing it. So you wear it for a period of time, you, you get to know it, you learn all about all the different features, and then you send it back to Garmin, to, to Coros or whoever it is. So you never get to keep the watch. So I wanted to get a watch to replace my Phoenix 6 Pro, um, and that's why I've been sort of doing all the homework and, and deliberating which one I was gonna get. And I basically got to the point where I bought the 965. Now this watch is 600 pounds, which is a what's it load of money. So I actually saved up. Um, I um, sold my Phoenix watch, and I got my birthday money, because it was my birthday, and I put that all together, and that's how I was able to afford the 600 pounds. Okay, so how the rest of this video is gonna work, I'm gonna tell you some stats and features now. I'm gonna probably read most of them out, because I always forget them. I'm then gonna tell you the things I like about the watch and the things I don't like about the watch, and then I'm gonna, uh, at the end of the video, recommend it to you, or not recommend it to you. So make sure you stick around to the end. Okay, so let's do the stats and features. And now the biggest thing on this watch is the AMOLED, and I don't know whether I'm saying that right, don't kill me in the comments, the AMOLED uh, screen. This is this new super bright screen that this has on it. The 265 has it as well, but it's the AMOLED screen, which is this just super bright and colorful uh, touch screen, okay? Also on this 965 versus 955, we've got a titanium bezel. Uh, the screen size, or the display is 1.4 inches. Now I don't know what these numbers mean, but 454 by 454, Corning Gorilla Glass AMOLED, right? So that's the glass on it, so it's like scratch resistant. Battery life, uh, 23 days, 300, uh, 331 hours with GPS. It's water resistant, 5 ATM, 32 gig of storage. On the watch, uh, what else, what else, what else? Oh, actually, let's talk about the sort of new features or the cool stuff that's now on it. Okay, so the features, uh, some of these are new, some of these have been bought over. We've got the training readiness uh, score, we've got the um, undetected body battery uh, widget, we've got the updated morning report, uh, we've got the pulse oxygen saturation, don't know what that means, fitness age, abnormal, uh, abnormal heart rate alerts after workout, You've got some women health stuff metrics on there. They've all been ported over. You've got the, obviously the advanced running metrics that come over. You've got full color maps. You've got Pro Pace uh, uh, Pro or whatever it's called, you know, where you can track it. And you've got all the navigation 
as well on it. Obviously you've got the heart rate monitor uh, on it and you've got like all the different satellites that it plugs into to get you that GPS. Okay, in terms of weight, it's a lot lighter than the Phoenix. Uh, if I'll put something up on the screen, the difference between the two, but it's quite significant in terms of the weight. Uh, you don't feel that weight when it's on your wrist, which is great as well with this new watch, which is one of the reasons that I'm absolutely loving it. Okay, so talking about that, let's do the things I'm liking on the 965 Forerunner next. Okay, so for me, the big win is obviously the display. I think it's absolutely stunning, uh, the display on this watch. I love the titanium bezel on it. It just gives it that little bit of an expensive feel. It is 600 pounds, so it does give it that sort of premium feel versus if it was like plasticky and stuff like that. I like the slimness of the watch. I love the weight of the watch. I'm digging the touch screen. This is the first touch screen Garmin that I've um, owned. Uh, we've also got uh, the ease of use, which I really dig. I just love the fact that you can just scroll through stuff so easily in it. Uh, I'm really now a big fan of the uh, morning report. I didn't really use that before, or I don't know if I've ever had it, but uh, no, it was on some of the other watches I tested, but I really like the morning report that I get. I like the fact that I can really drill into some of like, the sleep stats that um, I used to really like, but I, I just love that monitor and I like all the data that it's throwing at me. I also like the ease in which it gets GPS uh, signal. I like the ease in which it is to just to turn it on and go running. I like the fact that I could, if I wanted to, I could do biking and all that, all the stuff on it uh, and do swimming on that. It's obviously a multi-sport watch, so I like the fact that I can do all that sort of stuff. But I just genuinely like the, the lightness uh, and the functionality of this watch. Now, my biggest dislike is obviously £600. I had to pay £600 for the watch. And it does make me question um, whether you need to pay £600. And I'll come on to that in the conclusion. Uh, the other things I don't like is the strap. I think the strap feels a little bit cheap. They could have done with doing a higher quality strap. I'm sure it's going to last, but I just think the strap's uh, particularly low quality. Um, I can't find the Pace Pro at all. Uh, maybe I'm just being an idiot, but I can't seem to find... Uh, it anywhere like how I used to do it on the other um, watch just doesn't work. Uh, I struggle a little bit with the maps um, and getting all that. I still can't really work out, you know, the different menus and things like that. And I've said ease of use, but if you start going off on a on a tangent, it's very hard to get back. I don't like that it keeps recommending me to do um, different things on a certain day. I probably could turn that off, but I've not yet found that because uh, I just find that irritating. I just want to be able to switch it on and go for a run like I do most of the time, but when I do that, it, it tells me that it, I should be doing this, this, and this, and I don't want to be told what I want to do. I just want to go and run. Uh, but that's probably about it, guys. I, I mean, that, I've been really p um, picky there in terms of the stuff I don't like uh, because really, I really like it. Okay, so uh, in terms of the whether you need this over the 265, I don't think you do. I think if you're after the AMOLED, uh, screen, I think you go 265. If you're just after a really good watch, go 265, because it probably does most of the stuff that this does. I reckon I'm using maybe 10% of this watch's, of this watch's capacity and what it actually does and can offer. Uh, I've said that before on videos, I really don't use these watches to their full capability. Tony, um, Tony? Toby? <laughs> Tony would have a heart attack. Who's Tony? Anyway, Toby would have a, a heart attack. It's because I usually call him Speedco. Anyway, he won't like the fact that I don't use half of it, but I think it, it, it comes, obviously it comes down to price. Um, if you are price led, 100% get the 265. Um, it's probably gonna offer everything this does. But you know what, if you want a more premium feeling watch, but you don't wanna pay the 800 and something quid that the others are, then I really do think this is probably one of the best watches I've had. Uh, and obviously we review, uh, we reviewed a lot of watches on the channel. And I think for me, this is probably one of the best watches I've had. I just absolutely love the screen. I love the cleanness of it. And I love the touch screen. And I love, I just love the lightness of it. And yeah, just the overall feel of it just feels more suited to me than my previous watch. Okay, so that's it. Um, it's not a very technical review, this one, guys. I, I don't go into too much depth in terms of tech on this uh, on these videos. It's really whether I like it or I don't like it and things I like and things I don't like. Because if you want to watch those, there's obviously some really good uh, channels out there that go really deep in terms of the tech, so check those out. Uh, but for me, I'm really liking the 965 Forerunner. Uh, I stumped up the money myself. I'm glad I did. I'm glad I made the decision to sell my Phoenix uh, and get this. Uh, that, for me, was a, it was a good move. I feel like and I'm really enjoying having the 965 now as my running GPS watch.